Hello and welcome to uh, Shadowrun Hong Kong. Uh, I am your host, the Edbot, and let's get this started. New game. Uh, yes, launch campaign. Let's go for normal. Okay, let's get this started. Probably pop into character creation. There we go. I think I'm gonna go with uh, female this time, a standard orc. Oh, this is pretty similar to. Uh... Yeah, this is pretty similar to the the other games. Uh... Ooh, but the models are nice and different. Uh. Find a nice portrait. Probably gonna go street samurai. That's one of my preferred classes. Um, ooh, these are some nice new portraits. Uh, okay, so I think we've gone through all of them. Uh, I'm going to try using one of the, the new portraits. This one looks nice. Uh, let's continue to stats. Okay. Karma represents the experience you've won while shouting and achieving goals. Uh, improves attributes. Yeah, we've seen this all before uh, in the other games. Okay. Oh, but this is different. Oh, well, no, it's pretty similar to what they had in the, uh, the last few games. It's just a different UI. First, I want to put one into a new etiquette, because I always like having an etiquette. Uh, gang is a useful one, so. Uh, I wonder, do I want to have it... Do I want a melee? Or do I want... Uh, Or ranged or melee. Uh, I've generally found that ranged is a little bit more useful. We'll see how good the rifle is in this. Oh, uh, I guess I have to improve my ranged combat a bit. Let's increase my dodge just so I have some extra defenses. Um... Okay, so cyberware seems to be a completely new stat, so you can kind of go uh, like high body with a cyberware affinity. So that's a that's a neat thing. But I think I'm gonna just increase my I think I'll stick to having two extra karma points, yeah. I, I'll s okay, first name, uh, hmm, oh, I always get stuck on these, uh, these names for characters, uh, let's go Jackie. Uh, Gleason. This. I guess I have to go back all the way back. Gleason. No, god damn it. <laughs> I'm 
sorry. Uh, but I'm... Ha! <laughs> uh, Gleason. Street name. Uh, let's go with Dead Eye. cool that they asked for both like a, a street name and a oh there we go but it's cool that they asked for both a uh, like a real name and a street name you have one new message uh hi it's raymond I hope I have the right number. Look, I know we haven't spoken in a while, but I need your help. Remember the day I took you and Duncan off the streets? I told you that the past is just a story, that if you can just accept that, your past loses all power over you. Yeah. <laughs> I was wrong. To finish something I should have faced a long time ago. And I need you with me. I know we're not blood and we didn't leave things in a good place. But you and Duncan are the only real family I have. Please. If our past means anything to you... Meet me in Hong Kong right away. I'll explain more when you get here. I'm begging you. I'm almost out, out of time. the audio things is uh, intentional and not uh, just a, a sign of my crappy computer. Or else we gonna have problems. Raymond Black, the old man gave you a home once. Took you in and Duncan off the gang-ridden streets of the Barrens, sheltered, educated, and slapped some sense into both of, into you both, until you almost resembled a prod, uh, productive member of society. Then you took off, left it all behind, landed behind bars a few times, tried to start a new life after that. It's been eight years since you heard Raymond's voice, until out of the blue you get this cryptic message, a plea for help. Meet me in Kong, Hong Kong right away. And worried to, on your account enough Nguyen to pay, and wired you to an account enough Nguyen, Nguyen to pay you for your flight and then some. The descent is rough. A squall comes in out of nowhere, sending a solid sheet of rain pitching through the suborbital uh, transport. With a ragged shudder, the plane finally skids to a halt at the edge of the Czech Lap Kork tarmac. An hour and an interminable number of emotionless security checkpoints later, you hail a, weathered ta a water taxi to Victorian Harbor. Hong Kong lubes ahead, pulsing with energy. All right, let's get this started. Let's get to the, get to the story of Jackie Gleason. Would have been cool if I'd known his last name, so I could have taken it as taken it, and so. Kind of like a honor tribute to the old man. Okay. Come on. Get started. Any time now.
You step from the turning water taxi to the ponderous rocking docks, your stomach's lurching in transition at the transition. As soon as you're clear, the captain nods once and steers the small craft behind the harbor. The man never said a word, just handed you a worn brown duffel bag with a stamp board filled with a gear and some stiff new body armor, and a note. Better be better safe than sorry, D. I assume that's Duncan. Above, smog thick clouds hang low in the sky, reflecting the lights of the city in a nauseating swirl. The wind changes direction more than once, creating a hefty, heady stew of aromas diesel, sea salt, street food, and filth. It's all you can do to keep down your in flight meal where it belongs. Two figures stand uh, waiting in the dim light of the pier. The first, an orc, lean with your in-your-face muscles and jaw made uh, to break fists. The second is an elf, one has hand resting casually against her hip. Raymond Black is nowhere to be seen. Well, don't you look like shit. Duncan Wu, the closest thing you've had to a brother. You haven't ma uh, ma seen the man in eight years, still as charming as ever. He grins. Green's not really your color, Jackie. Doesn't go with that nice armor you got. As you open your mouth to, re mouth to respond, something shifts alarmingly in your stomach. A liquid, bubbling sensation. I don't know what you're talking about. Must be the harbor lights messing with you. Must be. Guess I've got some of your old, old fortitude, at least. He laughs. Considering how much Synthra Hall we used to put down, I'm surprised you could handle couldn't handle a little chop. Anyway, we gotta find Raymond. Find Raymond? I thought he would be here. Never showed up. He still got that same baritone rasp, as if you know, he had it since he was twelve. Wu developed early. You tr did you try to calm him? Nah, I've been just walking around the dock shouting his name. He says it as a joke, but there's a note of concern in his voice. I've been trying him for the last hour. No worry, uh, no answer. You seem kind of tense. You eating enough fiber? My colon's fine, thanks. Wu rubs, rubs his head. He's an old man. He's out there alone somewhere. Ray's a smart guy. He can take care of himself. Dwarf bows his head. His voice sounds far away. He's not the same, Jackie. Raymond hasn't been in himself in a long time. How so? He's been restless. Staying in his study and inside more of his own head a lot. And barely sleeps anymore. I've been worried about him, but I haven't figured out what to do about it. He looks up at you and shrugs. And I don't have a sister to turn to. And I don't have a sister to turn to. Hell, wasn't too sure you were still alive until Raymond managed to track down your number. The woman standing beside him breaks, uh, breaks in. We should get going, Duncan. Head down to the meeting point in case your dad shows up. Copy that, Sarge. He's wearing a Lone Star body armor. Look like Duncan Wu has gone private police. He was girlfriend or something? Hell no. I'm his partner. The woman taps the chest with an armored finger. Carter. I figured you, we could use some backup. Didn't know what Ray got himself into, and wasn't sure you got you were gonna show. He tossed an off remark, but there's an undercut of resentment in it. Well, surprise, here I am. Yeah, well, I wasn't sure, you know. He shakes his head. Hey, look, I'm glad you're here, Jackie. Seriously. But I'm gonna need to get some time to get used to ha you having 
uh, to used to having you around. Been a while since I heard of you. Know what I mean? Memories of sleepless night in lockup flashed by, wondering if you'd ever see Duncan or Raymond again. Running if you ever wanted to. And then, stepping out of the daylight, suddenly free, the fallout of some obscure corporate restructuring, a few hundred new in worth of apology from your former jailers, and a decision to start a new life, to leave the past behind, all of it, until now. I had my reasons. Can you leave it at that for now? Wu shrug uh, stares at you, his goggles reflecting the harbor lights. Sure. He scans the waterfront, frowning. Let's just find Raymond. He was supposed to meet us at the plaza, the other er, side of the pier. A bit sooner. The sooner we find him, the sooner you can have her big ha fappy, eh, big fappy, <laughs> big happy family reunion over dinner. Carter grins. And the sooner I can find a place to get a drink around here. Damn right. Ahead of you, Hong Kong rises like serpentine from the sea. Government and mega works coiled together, writhing in a basket of institutionalized corruption. No one can tell you where the snake's body end and the tail begins. And that's what Raymond used to say. Duncan turns, stares you down the pier. Carter follows. Okay, keep the team alive. Head to the meeting location. Okay, let's move down the pier. Carter, keep up. There we go. The guard's shack at the end of the pier is dark and empty. Duncan gives the gate a push, and it doesn't budge. Huh. That was open earlier. Duncan frowns. Looks pretty solid. Maybe if you bang your head hard against enough, it'll open. Heh, <laughs> maybe. He squints into the guard shack. Strange that no one's in it, though. Isn't it? Carter shrugs. Who knows? It's Hong Kong. Not exactly sure how things work around here. Come on, rookie. Let's cut to the construction site. I hate it when you call me that. Can I walk in this direction? Nope. Security checkpoint. The gate is locked, but a nearby control panel ne it appears accessible. Carter pulls it open with a metallic screech, and it pierces your skull, sending a new wave of pain through your churning stomach. She examines the control panel for a moment, then throws Wu a backward glance. Looks like there's a way off these docks on the other side of the gate. I think I can bypass the lock. Stand aside and let her work. Cardo fiddles with some wires and door those locks hiss open. Got it. Let's go. Okay, game saved. Oh, this looks like a combat encounter if ever I've seen one. Called it. Totally called it. Okay, so we got four hostiles. The group on the dock is fishing with a package out of a speedboat when you surprise them. Now the package is at the bottom of the bay and the speedboat disappearing in the distance. They close on you, red-faced and yelling. The light of the harbor glints off their weapons as they approach. The leader shouts something in Cantonese, but it's too fast to make out. You're rusty. 
It's been years since Raymond's house and the language lessons that wouldn't end. The old man never spoke anything but his native language at home. Wu speaks with authority, his Cantonese as solid as ever. He never let it drop. You guys doing some late night fishing? Oh yeah, we're fishing for assholes. Wu points at their weapons. You're gonna need some better bait. You're all, all you're gonna catch is some trouble. Seriously? Did they teach you that in rent a cop school? He turns to you with a smile on his face, then thinks better of it. Turns back to the smugglers. Who flashes his badge? Lone Star, put down your guns. Never seen a badge like that before. Either it's fake, or you're gonna you're some kind of security guard. Either way, it ends the same. I think he's done talking. Okay, I know how to turn base combat mode. Okay, let's move to the side. Take a shot at the mage. Okay, so the cover system works kind of similar to how... Uh, Nice, there we go. Nice, go out in the open. There we go. Do you think those guys were triad? Not sure. Didn't recognize their tattoos. Okay. I think I'll end the episode for here. Uh, thanks for much so, wa uh, so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, and I uh, will see you guys in the next video. Uh, goodbye.